Story time. Hi, everybody. Salima here, yoga therapist. Um, a few of you have been asking, Salima, what's your story? And I'm so delighted. That's that kind of curiosity always uh, warms my heart. It reminds me and all of us, hopefully it reminds all of us that it's a journey to get where we are. And I'm happy to share that with you. And I thought doing it here would be a great way to make a connection with you. And also that you know that I didn't just start teaching yoga. There was a big, there was a big journey involved in all of that. So let's do some easy stuff and get it out of the way. I live in Toronto, Canada with um, my son, my partner, and her kids. And uh, we have a couple of animals. <laughs> There's one right there. If you told me 15 years ago at the beginning of my yoga journey, this is where it would end up, I would have laughed, thought you were ridiculous, and wouldn't have known where to put that information. But one of the big lessons I learned from my Kundalini yoga journey so far is to get out of the way, to, to allow what is real and the truth to come through. And so, uh, spoiler alert, I never intended to be a Kundalini yoga teacher. I never thought I would do that. The pull of that actually came much beyond me and much more from a spiritual place than a practical, tactical career move. I never liked yoga when I encountered it in the very early days. So I had friends who would just love sun salutations. I had friends who would like um, go and do these yoga postures. I never really liked it. I had exposure to it through my family. My grandmother was a big fan um, to help her with backache and back pain. But, and I experimented on my own, but I never really enjoyed the classes. I like to go to the gym. I like to get sweaty. I like to build some muscle. Um, but I never thought of yoga in those ways. And so it didn't appeal to me. My mind was too busy, you know, the usuals. And then I got to a time in my life where I can very vividly recall sitting down on the couch. I was smoking cigarettes at the time. And I said to myself, I heard my inner voice say, if you don't do something different, you're going to not meet your potential. It's just not going to happen. And that voice rang very loud. Uh, it's true to this day, when I hearken back to that moment of like, wow, what am I going to do now? It, it is, was a rallying cry. It was a wake up moment. And it came from, you know, a place of sadness. I was making good money. I had a proper job, according to everybody. But I never really felt like all my gifts and talents were coming were being utilized or that I was ever going to rise in a in a leadership position based on the demographics of the company that I worked with, how I show up as a person. It just, I kind of sensed that my corporate life was going to be ending eventually. Um, not really what I wanted, but what was the writing was on the wall, let's put it this way. And so I reached this really low place of feeling a disconnect between where I wanted to be and what was actually happening. And so very soon after that, I got into a car accident, and the car accident was serious enough to put me in a place where I needed to do some rehab, and, and for me, it put me on a journey of finding a little bit more respite in my body. At the time, after that accident, a couple of days later, I tried to go back to the gym and do all my crunches and do all my ab work and do all my um, fitness stuff, and I just totally couldn't. Like that was the reality. I had injured myself in a way that wasn't going to wasn't going to allow a quick recovery. It was going to need something a little bit more, more serious. And so, with a friend who was deeply involved in the Pilates community in Toronto, and who was a meditator and a yogi of her own of her own making, um, I really uh, got turned on to this idea of moving physically and then also stilling the mind. And that was revolutionary for me at the time. It was, I had been exposed to meditation. My family was spiritual, but I never really had that experience of um, feeling a calm within until I sat in practice with meditation. That Those Pilates classes turned into invitations to come and do yoga. I took one invitation from somebody who I just like had an amazing conversation with. She invited me into a yoga class. And I went to that class and never saw her again. It was like, here you go. Here's the gift from the universe. Here's a person who's going to intrigue you enough to get you interested. And that person's not really important anymore. So they 
disappeared into the ethers. And what I was left with was a teacher. Um, she taught at a place called Yoga Space in downtown Toronto, and her name was Bibi. And Bibi one day called me up out of class and she said, you gotta take this more seriously. And I thought, what? <laughs> She said, take your yoga practice more seriously. And at, at the time I was practicing Hatha, Vinyasa, all the stuff that was regularly available in classes, yoga studios. And I thought, well, you know, I said to her, I've been practicing four or five times a week and I'm really curious about the chakras, but I don't know about teacher training. And she looked at me and she said, yoga has much more, is much more than the practice, the physical practice. And she looked me dead in the eyes and I felt like this dun, 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 this moment of truth and a moment of clarity. And even more so, I mean, I got amazing results from forward fold. I got an amazing result from closing my eyes in Shivasana. I mean, all of that was already happening. And, and the fact that there was more was very unique. And I remember signing up for my... Um, teacher training and being a little like oh man this is so much money and I don't even want to be a yoga teacher I just want to learn more for myself and I allowed the journey to unfold so I kept on with it and my I took 500 hours um, at the time and that was three weekends a month two nights a week it was like I ate and drank yoga all the time um, what I found about my teacher training was that it would really gave me a spirit, an ethos, a community, a philosophy, a way of showing up, a way of dealing with my emotional emotions, my emotional self, in a way that was felt feeling constructive. Um, I could self-regulate much better. I had a sense of my own um, truth much better. And and I just kept on taking the medicine. I did Kriya after Kriya after Kriya. I did Kirtan Kriya, Satanama, for, with an intention for 90 days. And I ended up doing it for a thousand days. And I really credit that early commitment to all the changes that have happened. And Kirtan Kriya is incredible medicine just by itself and a very powerful practice. You can find that here on my channel through links to the power pack. And I'll link all that below, just so that you have a sense of what that was about. So it was, uh, I gained some space to be myself, to be fully out and expressed, um, to recognize that that government job that I had wasn't filling my needs, though it was filling up my bank account. It wasn't really allowing me to experience and explore myself in the deepest way that I knew was possible and important, not just for me, but for my community, for the world. And it was that inner knowing. It, it wasn't a sense of ego. It wasn't a sense of like, oh, you're full of yourself. But it was like, there's truth here. I started to see the changes in myself. And when I had to do my practice classes for my certification, I started to see what was happening for other people. Incredible breakthroughs. People who were, you know, kind of tearing up in class and then finding finding their way back to me saying, you know, I, I got that release that I really needed. I got that moment of clarity I really wanted and I was hoping for. And this stuff is weird, but it's working. And I'm like, yeah, I know, right? Um, no other yoga were, was being taught with mantra or with um, some of the movements that we find so unique and interesting that aren't physically super rigorous or demanding, but are challenging. I loved all that stuff. And and even more so learning why it was working and what was creating that impact for me and passing that on because, you know, that's what you do. Sharing is caring. So I had that feeling and it was a place where I could also be a leader. And in that leadership role, um, I saw myself shine. Um, that's part of my numerology. That's part of what I wanted was to be able to be impactful in a meaningful way and, and to make a difference and to share what I knew and share my gifts and my talents. And Kundalini Yoga opened that for me. And so there's my story, Morning Glory. Thank you very much for listening in. Drop your comments below, drop your questions below. And there's a number of ways that we can sit one-to-one, -one, um, and that is numerology. You can book a session, the links are below. And then also Kundalini Yoga teacher training. And remember, if you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to teach, famous last words. Until next time, lots of love. Salima here. Like and subscribe. Do all those things. Bye for now.